Hey science family, it's Dr. Erica and I am so excited for day 15 of our science extravaganza. Oop. If you are just joining us for the first time today, I just want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, get our notifications so you know when we're going live. And just a reminder, you guys can do these any day. So we're archiving them. We're not deleting any of the live feeds. So you can take it at your own pace. You can hit pause if you need to. You can do it tomorrow if you want to or whenever your supplies come in. Um, and if you want a shout out, type it in the comments window. We will get to those in a second. First, I wanna talk about what we're going to do and what you're gonna to need to do it. So today, our paper circus project, we're gonna make a beating heart card. So it's this little guy and you can have it on, but if you move your finger across, so you got to find the right spot. There we go. You can make it beat, bump, 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 just like a normal heart, which is really fun. And so we're going to make that. And to make that, you're going to need our printout. So it should have at least two pages. You might have three because there's an instruction page that also prints, which I obviously did not print for myself because we're going to go through it together. But you'll need these two pages. I printed mine on harder stuff just so that it's like a little more stable. You're going to need a pair of scissors and regular masking tape or scotch tapes, just not a metallic tape, so not like a foil tape or a copper tape, because we need a non-conductive tape for it. And then you're going to want some copper tape so that we can make our circuit, a battery to power our circuit, and an LED to make our heart beat. And you can choose whatever kind of LED you want. I think actually in this one, it's a rainbow heart, even though it looks red most of the time. I think it turns into a rainbow, which is totally fine. If that's what you want, you can go for that. Um, we're gonna learn some cool facts about our heart as we learn how to wire it up. So that's gonna be really fun. I'm actually realizing I don't have my Curious George book with me. I'm gonna have Evan go grab that for me. He's off to go grab the Curious George book because otherwise we can't do like the zoom in on it. Um, we will have our Zoom class open after our YouTube, and my guess is there's going to be a lot of people there, which is awesome. You can show off your projects that you're doing, and you can show me any parts of your circuit that aren't working. We've had a really good time troubleshooting all of our paper circuits, and pretty much everybody has gotten it to at least work while we're on Zoom together. So if you're having trouble with your paper circuits, make sure you go over to Zoom and I can look at it and we can talk about how we can fix it so it works for you. And if you don't know about our Zoom classroom, it sort of opens up at noon-ish, but I really sort of go into Zoom whenever we're done on YouTube. And you can get the Zoom, um, whatever, the meeting ID and the password through our Patreon page. So our Patreon page has all of the downloads, all the stuff you need to do, all of our science, and it helps support us as we're going through this crazy time. And we're adding a whole nother week of science because Washington just extended their stay at home till May 4th. So we get an extra bonus week, which I'm super stoked. So we'll see what we're gonna do on week seven, but I do know next week, we're gonna do a lot of stuff in the kitchen and we're gonna make lots of delicious, tasty treats as we do some science. This is gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna make plastics out of food. We're gonna make edible Orbeez. We're gonna make sugar candy and calibrate our ovens. It's gonna be amazing. So I'm super excited for that. All right, who do we have with us? Who do we have with us? We have, first here was Naomi. Hello, Naomi. It's so good to see you again. She was here yesterday. She just She's been us. here like all week. Yeah, amazing. I'm digging it. And then the Hertz are here, Taylor, Jacob, and Megan. Hello, Taylor, Jacob, and Megan. And there's the Lindbergh's, Amelia, Chloe, Oh, and yay, Amelia, Chloe, and who am I missing? Oh my gosh, Calvin. 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 Sorry. Ah. Too much going on in my head Isabella right now. reached in from the outside, too. Isabella did. Isabella, we, my kids know your guys' kids. I think that's amazing. <laughs> then we have May. May. Oh, May, May. Should we sing happy, happy birthday? birthday? Happy birthday. I don't think we should birthday. sing happy birthday. But I'm going to give you a big <laughs> happy birthday. And then we have George and Henry. Hi, guys. Hello, George and Henry. And then Anna and Clara are here. Hello, Anna and Clara. Ooh, I'm excited to see all these projects. It's going to be great. Jackson. Hey, Jackson. Hey, Jackson. And Vinatia is in the home. Yes, Vinatia! I'm so excited you're coming. I hope you guys have found your circuit stuff. It's been a little tricky to find them, but we put some eBay links out there. You know what? She said something super sweet. Oh. She said, we are so happy that we found you, Dr. <gasps> I'm so happy that you guys found me, too. Because I really love seeing all of your projects, Vinatia. They are fantastic. Big fan. Connor. She had a great sell. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, it was really nice. Connor is so excited. Hi, Connor! And maybe your sister, too. Yeah. Connor's always the one, like, showing up, but his sister's always hanging out next to him doing the science, so big fan. Elliot says hi. Hello, Elliot. And the good kids. <gasps> the good kids are here! Good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. And I think the good kids know the hurts. Really? I feel like there's a lot of word plays we could do. Maybe. Like, when they're together, like... It's a good hurt. Don't hurt the like good kids. Like when you're like, when you're like going on a marathon and you're working out. It's, it's a, a good, good hurt. hurt. Yeah. It's they could all go work out together. It's, it's a good hurt team. <laughs> okay. I should be a dad. I have like really terrible jokes and stuff. <laughs> They're terrible. Yeah. Anyhow. Anyhow, it's time to do some science. All right. Let's do it. So I'm just going to give you some fun facts off the top because I have a question for my older kids like Amelia and maybe Finn might be in and Luke might be here and Alex sometimes comes. So all of my middle school, my middle school peoples or younger if you want to try to do the math problem, that's totally cool. So our hearts are like the size of your fist and they beat more than 100,000 times per day. But for our math, we're going to say they beat 100,000 times a day. And here's something shocking. Okay, first, I thought 100,000 beats per day was kind of shocking. That really surprised me. But this is even more surprising to me. They pump not like 10 gallons of blood, not 20 gallons of blood, not even 100 gallons of blood. They pump 2,000, 1,000, 2,000 gallons of blood every day. So here is my question to anybody who wants a quick math problem to try to work out. First, how many gallons does our heart beat, like pump per beat? Curious question. And if you can get that, I'm curious if you can convert it to ounces because gallons is going to be a weird thing. It'll be like some weird fraction of gallons and we'll be like, what does that mean? But ounces we can all relate to because I know like 12 ounces is like a Coke can or a sparkling water can. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm curious. So if you do the math, you can put it in and Evan will give me some answers as we go so and if you're watching this at a different time you can still do the math and think about it and see if you can figure it out and write it in the comments and write it in the time. comments because yeah all right so when our heart beats our heart is super important because our blood needs oxygen and we talked about how our blood is the one cell of our body that doesn't have dna it doesn't have a nucleus they kick it all out so it can hold more hemoglobin which it binds to oxygen and what happens is in our lungs we breathe in and like all this blood that really needed some oxygen fills up on blood. And then we breathe out and we get rid of all the carbon dioxide we don't need. Awesome. Great. If we didn't have a heart, that blood would still get oxygenated and it would diffuse. So diffusion is sort of like when it randomly walks around and it would do like something like this. But then if you think about my toes, like it's going to take a long time for it to randomly get to my toes. And by the time it does, my toes are like super unhappy. They are dead. So our body has developed this pump and this pump helps move that blood. And it's really interesting. So our heart has two chambers. So it's got these two chambers right here. And what happens is we open a chamber and it's kind of like a waiting room of blood. So like a bunch of blood goes into the waiting room and then it gets pumped out. And if the blood didn't have oxygen, it gets pumped over to our lungs where we breathe and put oxygen in that blood. And then the blood goes back to our heart into another waiting room. Cause now it's like, Ooh, I got the goods. And then it gets pumped through our body. So we actually have two chambers. We pump into our lungs and then it goes through our lungs to get the oxygen back to our heart. And then it pumps out to the rest of our body, which is how our hearts basically save our toes so that our toes can get oxygen, which is really important. So we have this awesome model of a heart. There are on your little cutout, you can label it if you would like to. Or, you know, in our house, sometimes we really love these games where we have tags and you then move it to the spot it goes to. And then you can like wipe it off and then you can also put them back. So it's a great way if you want to have like a learning opportunity, something to do where you can be like, mom, dad, I just want to go play with my science project and I'll learn about the heart. And that's what I'm going to get do for like the next 10 minutes of homeschool time. And they could also could decorate great. it, right? And you can totally, oh my gosh, decorate away. I love, and if you decorate it in a really cool fashion, please send us a picture because I would love to see all of our hearts. Um, so yeah, so you can, it's got all of these guys here so you can figure out where everything goes and we'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, 
But you can also, if you just cut these out instead of labeling them, you could use it as sort of like a, a tool to learn, like a Montessori type of tool where you're gonna place the labels where they go, which is really cool. So this is gonna be the piece, but we're not actually going to use it quite yet because in our paper circuits, we're gonna wire up our circuit first. I'm gonna get Curious George out. And we are going to take our second piece of paper, which is the one that looks like this. It's got our circuit drawing on it. And I'm just gonna tape it to Curious George. So I hopefully have one last thing to think about. All so right. what, what will people need right now? So right now you're gonna need your copper tape, your battery, and your LED. Now, if you've done paper circuits with me before, you can hang tight for a moment because I want to talk to some friends who are maybe new who have never done a paper circuit before. So this is our copper tape and it's shiny on this side. This is the metallic side that lets the electrons run free. And then there's paper on the back of our tape. And when we peel this paper off, it's going to be sticky. And when you make paper circuits, it's really important that you peel a little bit, so you make like a little teeny tiny tea like this, just like maybe a centimeter, and then you immediately stick it to the paper wherever you're gonna go, like this, and then you slowly peel the backing and stick it down, just sort of like that. Because if we don't, if instead we pull all of our backing off of our copper tape, it does this like really frustrating curly thing, and then you like have to touch it a bunch of times to try to get it to go straight, and then by the time you've touched it so many times, see even it's like hard, but it's like not sticky and then it doesn't stick to your paper. So instead of doing that, you want to make sure you leave that paper backing on and peel it as you stick it down. So we're gonna do this top piece that comes out to the left um, and down first, because that's the part that's gonna go under our battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my copper tape, I'm gonna peel just a little bit. Pause for one second. Yep. Um, looks like Claire and Anna printed theirs double-sided. Ooh. Can you show us how the copper tape diagram and heart illustration line up? So we're gonna basically tape the, the heart over the top at the end. So this is like the second piece. I printed them not double-sided. So the second piece is just like literally taped on. Let's see if I can get it off the tape like this. So you guys could do the paper circuit part and then as your heart prints, once your heart prints, you can just tape it on to wherever it goes. Just like that. Yeah, because otherwise... It doesn't quite line up right. It might not, I don't know actually. I mean, maybe it turns out cool because like you can have your heart this way and then the circuit and then you do like your beating and it could look cool. But it would be dimmer. So... Mm. Up to you. Yeah, it's up to you to see how that one works out for you. But what I would say is let's do the, the paper circuit part together because even if you need to print a second piece of the heart, you can always, that's the easiest part to layer add on. on top. Yeah, to just layer it on top. All right, so I'm going to do this guy first. So I'm going to peel it a little bit. I'm going to stick it down just like this. And if you've never done paper circuits with us before, we're not gonna rip our tape. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna peel a little extra to get around any corner and we'll just give it a little like loop that goes up. It's kind of like a little jumper loop. And I can press that down and I've made a beautiful turn without cutting my copper tape. And then I can peel this back and press it down as I go. I'm gonna press it down into this green battery right here. And you'll notice that I was able to do it kind of loosely and I pressed down loosely. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm just gonna come all the way up on it, just like that. Perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna put my battery in. And my battery, the way we put it in, we always look at the side that has the letters. So there's two sides. One side has a plus sign, it'll have the type of battery, which is CR2032. And there's the bottom, which is sort of for all of mine has sort of like a polka dot pattern and the polka dot pattern always goes against the paper. So we're gonna make it so that we can still read our letters and we are going to just take a little piece of tape. I'm actually gonna cut this tape in half. So it's like really small. Before you go farther, did you talk about testing the LED? Oh, the yeah. Thanks, Evan. We've done so many paper circuits that I, yeah. Okay. so. If you're new, what we want to do, we want to make sure we test our battery and our LED because we don't want to get all the way into a paper circuit and find out that it's not working. 
So LEDs and batteries can go together in a bunch of different ways. You could put both legs on top of the battery, which doesn't make it work. You could put both legs on the bottom of the battery, which doesn't make it work. Or you could put one leg on each side of the battery. And you might notice it also doesn't make it work. And that's because our LEDs, if we look really closely, they have um, a long leg and a short leg. And we want that long leg to go on the top of the battery and the short leg to go on the bottom because LEDs are like one-way streets are like slides. So the electrons are gonna go through the slide and shout out, yippee, and light up as they go down the slide. But they're such good rule followers and never go up the slide. So if we put the slide backwards for the electrons, they're staring at the bottom of the slide, nothing happens. So you gotta make sure that we put the slide the right direction and it should light up. So you do wanna try that beforehand. And if it doesn't, when we have it in the right way, then we grab another LED and see, ooh, is the LED what's broken or is it the battery that's run out? And that helps you troubleshoot your circuit before you get, even get into trouble. So yes, thank you for that reminder. Definitely wanna test our stuff. And now we are going to tape our battery in so that we can read the words. So I still have, I can still read that plus sign. And I'm gonna leave a spot on the top of my battery that's open. So I need to still be able to see the metal part of my battery. And I'm just gonna put a tiny little piece of tape over here too, just to like hold it in a little bit better. Perfect. So now I am ready to do the next line. So this next line is gonna come down and it's gonna go over to the left, but it doesn't go all the way to my battery. It's actually gonna just go to here, to this little spot here, because we're gonna do another one that's gonna come to the battery. And we have to make sure that these two pieces of copper tape don't touch each other, because that's gonna actually gonna be our switch. When they're touching each other, our LED is gonna go on, which is how we're gonna make it so that we have this sort of bump, bump, beating heart to it. All right, so we're gonna take the copper tape, peel it just a little bit, and you're gonna come down like this. You know, we're gonna slowly peel and stick it down onto our paper, just like that. And when I get to the corner, this is sort of a big corner, I'm gonna peel it a little bit. I'm gonna put it in the direction that I'm hoping for. And I'm gonna stick it down, and then I can just flatten out the rest of it. All right, and I'm gonna go straight across, just like that which is perfect. All right, and I'm gonna cut it. And copper tape, you can actually just rip with your fingers if you need to. All right, so I have that piece on and I can flatten it out with my nail. And again, if it breaks during this, ideally we have enough copper tape to just try again and restart. Because if we layer the two pieces of copper tape, like this one broke and I still need it to go this way and I layer them, the electrons have to go through glue to get to the other piece of metal that they can freely run around in. And they get really stuck in that glue and they're like, ugh, I can't get through. Bleh. And then if they can't run around and get through, they can't go down that slide to light up. So that kind of breaks your circuit, it's, um, which is no fun. We get an, what's called an open circuit. Did you know that Griffin's here? <gasps> Hi, Griffin. And so are Carter and Harrison. Yay! Hello, Carter and Harrison. I'm super glad you're joining us today. All right. So my next one is going to go here. And it's going to go on top of the battery. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave a little extra so I can fold it. Because, again, I don't want it to be battery glue copper tape. I want it to be battery copper tape. So I need to fold it over when I get there. So I'm just going to think about that ahead of time. And I'm going to... I can barely see all the way down there. I'm hoping that these guys aren't touching. I don't think they are. So these two pieces right here, we wanna make sure that top and the bottom don't touch each other because we want this to be our switch where when we connect the two pieces, then our LED goes on. So I'm gonna bring it over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rip a little bit up. I'm gonna rip with the backing on. And I can rip the backing a little bit here too if I want. So I sort of have this piece of copper tape that's sticky, and then I actually have it with the paper backing. And what I'll do is I'm gonna fold it over just like that. So I'm gonna make this nice little fold with the paper so I don't have to worry about it being hard and sticky. And then I'm gonna tape that fold so it goes straight down onto that battery and I can press this down. So I'm gonna tape this down. And we will likely need to press on that battery 
when we are making our circuit go, just to give it a little bit of extra um, pressure. But I'm just gonna tape it down like that so that now I have this piece of tape comes over and it sort of hooks down so the tape is folded over and it's touching right onto the top of that battery. So I basically have this circuit that kind of comes out from the bottom of the battery, pauses because we're gonna put an LED there, goes here and just waits and then it can jump over to this one. I'll show you how in just a moment and that's gonna go into the top of our battery. And so to figure out how we connect these two, there's actually two little pieces of copper tape down below. And we're gonna fold that piece of paper up and so that when we press on this piece of copper tape, it actually presses across, it creates like a bridge, which is great because that will make the circuit turn on that LED. And then as we move our finger, it doesn't touch anymore, which is awesome because then my LED turns off. And then I move my finger a little more and I press the next one and it turns on. And then I move it more and it turns off so I can get this sort of like on off, on off, on off, on off, which looks like a heartbeat. So the further you put them away, the faster, or like apart from each other, the further these are apart from each other, the faster you can sort of move your finger back and forth to create the bump bump. Um, if this might be close, it might be like bump bump, bump bump, bump bump. So if you're worried about that, you could put them slightly further apart from each other. And you just wanna make sure you go all the way to the end of your piece of paper. So if you need to, you can even go around the corner of the paper. So we're just gonna go all the way to the bottom, just like that. So I've got one piece there and it's handy. I don't even need to peel it because I've still got this piece here. So I got this guy over here. And you'll notice like I'm, I'm putting mine a little bit further apart than what I made originally on my template. Um, and you'll also notice I'm not too worried if my copper tape goes off of this yellow line on the template. It doesn't have to be perfectly on the whole time. It's just sort of a guideline. So that's sort of where we wanna be. But we do wanna make sure like these two are not touching because that will make our LED on all the time. All right, so it is time to tape in our LED. So remember our LED has that long leg and that short leg. And here the long leg is gonna go down and the short leg is gonna go to the side. So I can just make it sort of do the splits a little bit. And I can line it up so that long leg is going straight down and then the short leg is going to the side. And I'm gonna take a piece of masking tape, so not copper tape. Masking tape sticks really nicely. Piece of masking tape, and we will put this on here. You wanna make sure when you tape it down that you have really good contact between the metal leg of the LED and the copper tape. So it's really important to get that right on top. And one of the biggest problems I see when we make paper circuits is maybe we put our LED down and we pick it up and we put them sort of backwards and we get the short leg where the long leg needs to go. So you do wanna make sure you get that long leg going straight down and you're just gonna take a piece of masking tape or scotch tape, you're gonna tape right over it. And I like to press really hard right there just to make sure it gets really, really good pressure. And it makes good connection. And I'll take another piece of copper tape or not copper tape, scotch tape, masking tape, oh my goodness. And I'm gonna tape that down on the short leg. We gotta tape down both legs. So just one leg is not enough. We gotta do both legs. You gotta make sure both legs are on their little pieces of copper tape. So this guy's gotta go on here for my short leg, which is going over to the side, just like that. Now we are gonna test our circuit before we do anything else. So the way you can test it is you can take a little piece of copper tape, just rip it off, a little piece, and you're gonna put copper to copper and you're gonna cover these two, this gap right here. So you notice that when I press across these two, that gap that we wanted to be so that they didn't touch, if I make them touch, my LED goes on. So that is exactly what I want. If yours doesn't go on, the first thing to try is to press on the battery at the same time. In fact, on this one, it doesn't actually work like that. I do have to press on the battery. Let's see. So you'll notice if I'm not pressing on the battery, it's not really on. But if I press on the battery, it is. So the first thing to check would be to see, do I need to press on the battery? And if you do, and you don't want to in the end, that's okay. At least we know we've got all of our wiring together and all of the wiring works so that we know like all of this is working. We just need to make a few tweaks with how it's connected to the battery. 
So that's really helpful. All right, so hopefully we've got this guy where we can test it and it's working. And then what we'll do is there's this long blue dotted line that goes all across the bottom and we're gonna fold that up towards the LED. So we're gonna make this nice little fold and you're gonna fold it up towards the LED. And I've got some thick paper, so it's a little trickier of a fold, but we'll make it work just like this. Let's see. May's asking, does it have to tape, not glue? I think in the with the battery. Um, yes, you definitely want tape because what I've learned with glue is glue will actually get between, like if you're doing it here or in the battery, glue will get between the leg and the copper tape. And so you'll still have that part where like the electrons can't get through the goo and your circuit won't work for you, which will be a total bummer. All right, so I got this guy. And I noticed that when I press against those two parts, they go on, off, on, off. So I've got this little guy that's blinking. As I press, now I can make it go, I can go faster and make the heartbeat faster, or I can go really slow like that. And if you wanted it even slower, we could space those two further apart to make it so you have to stretch further apart. You just need to make sure that they still connect these two pieces. So now that that's working, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my masking tape and I'm just gonna tape down this piece. And if I tape really gently over it, it won't be on all the time. So I can even show you guys that I've taped over that spot, but it's not on. I still need to press it for it to turn on and beat my heart, which is cool. And I feel like I didn't give to give some of my super cool things. Like, do you guys know a blue whale's heart? It's the biggest heart on the planet. It's 400 pounds. 400 pounds. I'm, I'm like shocked by it. All right. Fit two of me in it. And you'll notice every time I'm putting tape down, I'm checking that my circuit works. And once I have a paper circuit that shows me it's working even like slightly, I always make sure I keep checking it after every little thing I do. A good tip to take off. Oh, goodbye goods. I hope you guys got your little heart made. They need the copper tape. Oh, they need the copper tape. All right. Have fun with the activity. Yeah, if you guys need some of this stuff, I can always mail some stuff. It's also, I sent out some eBay links for people who need it, which is good. Um, all right. We have so. some some winners already. <gasps> we have some people who are already Naomi working. Naomi already got it working. Naomi, awesome job. This is her first paper circus too, because I think Naomi joined us this week. I think Venetia got it working. Venetia, yes. Girl power, you guys go, that's amazing. I love it. I'm super impressed. I'm always impressed with like how well kids do when they are forced to be independent on it. Like you guys have to do it. And then you learn, you learn so much more. It's amazing. Um, and so Vinity and Naomi, if yours is already working, you're like ready to cu cut out your heart. And you can, I sort of can, you can, if you want to, you can like sort of trace cut around it. I don't know if that's even a word, but you can sort of do like an outline cut like this. So that maybe it looks cooler, um, which is really fun. And here's another really cool fact about hearts. Insects, they do have hearts. Their hearts don't pump blood in one direction like ours. They pump in both directions. Isn't that interesting? They sort of like slosh stuff around. I thought that was kind of cool. Maybe I'll cut here. And I also learned while I was looking up really interesting heart facts today that our blood vessels, if we took all of our blood vessels out of our body, terrible idea, obviously, um, they would stretch for 60,000 miles, 60,000 miles. That's like two times around earth. What inside of you right now, 60,000 miles. I couldn't believe it. So the Hertz have a question. They say, yeah. do the two little pay pieces of tape go over the other two ones at the bottom? Um, so you may have to unfold your... Yeah, let me unfold mine. Hang on, let me just get this guy finished cutting out. And we have another successful circuit Yay! from the Wolves. Nice, George and Henry. I love it. All right, so do... You, let's see. We're going to untape my little guy really gently. 
Doop, doop, doop. And so what was the question, Evan? So do the two little pieces of tape go over the two ones at the bottom? Yes, yeah, so these two little pieces of tape should be able to touch on contact these two that go on the bottom. So that's the whole reason why we're folding it up is so that this one when it's folded up actually crosses like this and this one crosses like that. So you're basically creating the same effect as when you take a piece of copper tape and you put it across the two. That's what these two pieces, yeah. That's why we've got to fold it up so that they can press on. So if I just, there we go. I think I lifted up my battery a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's okay. I can just press my battery, not a big deal. Yeah, so that we do want those two little pieces to be able to touch the other pieces for us. So I have some exciting news. Yes. Elliot got it. Nice Good job, Elliot. But with no help at all from mom, just rocked it. Elliot, great job. Super impressed. Oh my gosh, you guys are, you guys are doing so good. I think Elliot's taken my paper circuits class with me before. Really good job. Made pianos and stuff. So I'm going to put the heart on. You can put it on however you would like. Um, you could just tape it down and it would look something like this when it beat, which is maybe what you want. You could try to raise it up. And like maybe I, I think I sort of raised mine up a little bit by just putting a roll tape and then smushing my heart down where I wanted it to. I kind of want it to cover up. Do it. There it is. Bump, bump. And I really like it because it's going to kind of shine out from the top of that, which is really fun. So that is our beating heart, which is amazing. I'm super impressed. It's like four or five people that have already gotten it on their own. Yeah. Super impressed. Did anybody figure out how many we did have some guesses. gallons of blood we, we get through per ounce? Or so per, per pump? If the hertz are still here, they said... 50 gallons from Taylor. Per pump? Per pump. Ooh, not quite 50 gallons. That'd be a lot. Uh, and Jackson also said 50 gallons. Ooh, not. It's less than one gallon, actually. So the goods, I think they're gone, but they guessed 2.56 ounces. They were right. Good job, goods. Yeah. 2.56 ounces. So like every, so each beat pumps that, and we do like two beats. So if you think about, basically six heartbeat sets pumps a 12 ounce can of water or of blood because we don't pump water but you know like the 12 ounce little sparkling water cans every yeah. six feet so bump 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 holy moly my body has already pumped an entire can so that's surprising i don't know i find that really surprising hmm. i thought that was cool the blue whale does pump 50 gallons per beat Ooh. So they were right on the whale part. But that's because the blue whale's heart is like five feet around and it's 440 pounds. It's the biggest mammalian heart that we have on the planet because they are the biggest creatures. And when they dive down, their heart beats to like it slows to like four beats per minute. And then when they come up and breathe, it like speeds up to like 40 beats a minute. To get a bunch of oxygen. To get all the oxygen through. I mean, how cool is that? I think that's really neat. All right. So hopefully the, you guys have this working. If you don't have it working yet, no big deal. Cause we're going to go head on over into zoom and we will, you can show me your circuits really up close and we will figure out why your circuits are not working. If you have gotten it to work. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Super impressed. Love it. I'm, I'm so impressed. Like this is only our third paper circuits project. And like, that's like four, five, six kids that have done it. Awesome. Next week for our paper circuits project, we're actually not doing it on paper. We're gonna do it on a little recycled yogurt cup because we're gonna make a little like chef that buzzes around the table. Because I just love little like the little vibrating robots that come around. So we're gonna make a little chef because we're gonna do all sorts of molecular gastronomy next week, which is gonna be really, really fun. I can't wait to see people. All right. So we're gonna move on over into Zoom. Just a reminder to share all of our stuff with your friends, tell everybody to join the party, give us a thumbs up um, so that we can spread our message of science. We'll be here for an extra week at least, May 4th, until we'll see what our governor does around that time. Um, but we're gonna keep going and hopefully we'll switch to doing something monthly after that, which will be really fun. So that way I can, all, cause I'm like really getting attached to all of my friends here. So I'm gonna be, 
I don't know. Maybe I want to just stay in quarantine forever so we can hang out. Mm. Probably not. No, that's a terrible idea. Mm. But maybe we could just hang out afterwards, like once a month. I think that would be fun. <laughs> okay. So we're going to head over into Zoom and we will see you there. Have a great one. Good job today for everybody who's already made it work. We'll see you soon. Guys, we will get the video working in just a second over in Zoom. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get this guy cleaned up. You want to make it? Awesome. Let's see. Can you print off another one? You got to find the spot where it works. So it'll be easier for you to find it once you make it. But we're going to let me print off one for you. And then you can do it. <laughs>